2022 looks to hopefully be the year of Kratos. With 2018's PlayStation Classic God of War releasing on PC on January 14th, and its sequel God of War Ragnarok still scheduled for later this year, we're all about to get a lot of the God of Big Dad energy. I made a deal with the God that cost me my soul. So, we figured this was the best time to look back at 13 of the coolest secrets, easter eggs, and facts about the God of War franchise that you probably didn't know. Even if you're the goddess of wisdom Athena, there's sure to be at least one fact on this list that you didn't know before. But before we get started, if you like this type of content, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe, it really helps us out. But with that said, let's jump into the Bifrost. 2005's original God of War was a huge game changer for the industry, and it was actually initially inspired by God of War's game designer David Jaffe having played the Japanese game Animusha, a game about a ninja going through Japanese myths to kill demons. Jaffe felt inspired to make a game like Animusha, except using Greek mythology instead of Japanese. He also drew upon Ico to inspire the game's puzzles, Devil May Cry for the action, and even American McGee's Alice for how to take familiar characters and put a twist on them. All of these eventually got mixed together to create the beautiful, gore-filled classic that is God of War. The gods of Olympus have abandoned me. One of the biggest changes the 2018 game made to the franchise was giving Kratos a son named Atreus, forcing the God of War to have to think slightly less about killing everything in sight and more about how to raise a child in a brutal world. Boy, look at me. We did it. Yet, as radical as this change was, Kratos having a child was actually part of some of the earliest iterations of the character. Back during the initial stages of development for the 2005 PS2 game, many designs for Kratos were considered. Some featured him with long hair or dreadlocks instead of his bald head and tattooed look. However, one of the most notable images included him carrying a baby on his back, a la Death Stranding. This would have certainly made for an interesting change to the initial game's trend-setting gameplay, and one wonders if it would have come coupled with Kratos downing a ton of monster energy drinks in order to kill more Medusas. So, thankfully, it didn't make it into the game. However, it was an interesting, if unintentional, foreshadowing for the Ghost of Sparta's later adventures. Speaking of the God of War's origins, while Kratos does seem right at home in the pantheon of Greek gods, he is an original character made for the games. However, that doesn't mean that he was entirely made up out of whole cloth. All on Olympus tremble at my name! In fact, Kratos actually is inspired by the Greek god Kratos, also known as the god of strength, might, power, and sovereign rule. Kratos often advocates for unnecessary violence and is known to be merciless. So you can probably see where the two share a ton of similarities. <laughs> However, there are a few key differences, such as Kratos being a full god versus Kratos' demigod status. Kratos is also perhaps best known for convincing the god Hephaestus to chain Prometheus to a rock as punishment for his theft of fire, where his liver would be eaten by birds again and again for all time. Conversely, Kratos in the games actually is the one to free Prometheus, eventually letting him die and using his ashes to free Pegasus. So maybe Kratos has a bit more mercy than his mythological counterpart? <laughs> but only, only a bit more. The first God of War game was trendsetting for its, let's say, liberal use of violence, gore, and nudity, causing a bit of a minor controversy upon its release, especially around its sex minigame. Yet it wasn't the sex that got the game ultimately censored. While God of War would be released mostly untouched in the United States, there was one scene that was deemed too much for European and Japanese audiences. At one point in the game, in order to progress, Kratos is required to give a human sacrifice. In the US version, Kratos finds a Greek soldier trapped in a cage who is filled with hope that Kratos will release him from starving to death. Let me out! We can find our way back to Athens! The gods demand sacrifice from all of us. Oh, please. No. No. Kratos instead pushes the soldier up a hill as the soldier screams for release. Let me out. Please show mercy. Finally kicking him into flames where he is burnt alive, allowing Kratos to move forward. No. 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 
obviously not exactly an easy to watch scene. In fact, the scene was so brutal that in European and Japanese versions, the soldier is replaced with an angry undead enemy, gutting the scene of its impact on both Kratos' character and the player. At least hopefully the soldier got to see his family again in that version. We hope. Maybe. Kinda. Have you ever wished you could just call up Kratos on your phone for a nice chat? Your son has returned! I bring the destruction of Olympus! Well, surprise, you actually can give your favorite Greek demigod a ring to this day. At the end of the original God of War, there's two statues hanging in your new god chambers of the bosses that you beat throughout the game. However, you're Kratos and you don't need statues to remind you of your conquests, so if you spend a good chunk of time just hacking away at the statues, they'll eventually collapse, revealing a code that you can put together into a phone number. And if you call that number, the God of War himself would answer, and even be interrupted by David Jaffe. Though things don't really end well for the God of War creator in the call. Together, we shall conquer the perils that lay before us, and we shall always- Kratos, dude, dude, they did it. They found our Easter egg. Who are you? It's me, David Jaffe. I directed the game. What game? The number, which is on screen right now, still works to this day. Believe me, I tested it. So if you feel like giving your favorite Greek god a call, check it out. Speaking of cell phones, while everyone knows the mainline games, God of War, God of War 2, God of War 3, 2018's God of War, as well as the spin-off games including God of War Ascension, Ghost of Sparta, and Chains of Olympus, there is one game that most people often completely forget when discussing the franchise. God of War Betrayal. Betrayal was a 2007 game made exclusively for mobile phones, back when we all thought playing games on your flip phone was a good idea. The game was a 2D side-scroller that acted as a sequel to the first game, with Kratos, newly christened as the God of War, being framed for the murder of Argos and pursuing the true killer throughout the game to clear his name. In fact, the story of the game is used as justification for why the relationship between Kratos and the rest of the gods changed between God of War 1 and 2, leading to their betrayal. Surprisingly, the game actually received positive reviews, with it being praised for its tight gameplay and fun combat. So, if you're a franchise completionist, you may want to dig out your flip phone and give it a try. Okay, this fact is a little bit of a duh, but it's kind of too funny not to mention. The initial God of War was incredibly influential, and it led to a ton of clones of the game for years to come. Some, like Dante's Inferno or Castlevania Lord of Shadows, were actually well received. However, there were some less than stellar and sometimes bizarre knockoffs. For example, the MCU tie-in game, Thor God of Thunder, may initially make sense to steal God of War's signature style, given that you're also playing as a mythological god, but its bland gameplay couldn't match up to the dazzling brutality of Kratos. However, the strangest knockoff had to be Sonic Unleashed, where half the game had you playing as a beast mode version of our favorite hedgehog who played exactly like Kratos. Look, I get that sometimes you want to chase a trend, but whoever thought having Sonic, the fastest thing alive, suffer through these plotting, pace-destroying levels sadly didn't understand what made both Sonic or God of War great. Which is sad, considering the actual Sonic-like levels of Unleashed are actually a ton of fun, but are sadly lost in between these boring rip-off levels. Jumping forward a bit, 2010's God of War 3 was initially billed as Kratos' final adventure. While we all know today that that's not true, even the game at the time decided to leave things open for future games. At the end of God of War 3, Kratos opens Pandora's box, releasing the evil inside to corrupt the gods, but also imbuing Kratos with hope. When Athena demands he return this power of hope to her, Kratos instead stabs himself, seemingly killing himself to give hope to all of mankind. However, a post credit scene reveals a trail of blood off the mountain hinting at Kratos' survival. We wouldn't see what happened next to the God of War until he reappeared in 2018's soft reboot. However, the novelization of the game offers a few interesting tidbits of what happened in those missing years. First, it was revealed that Kratos again tried to kill himself after God of War 3, but was unable to due to a curse by the Greek gods preventing him from ending his life. Further, he also tried to discard the Blades of Chaos, and while he was able to remove them from his body, he ultimately couldn't truly leave them behind completely. Again, cursed to have them close to him for the rest of his life. Additionally, Kratos was brought to Midgard by a mysterious woman and three wolves, eventually revealed to be Fenrir, Skull, and Haiti. From there, he met his future wife, and they built the house that you start the game in, where they lived for at least 50 years until the start of the game, meeting no one else as they raised their son, Atreus. Okay, this is a fun one because it involves a mistake from us right here at GameSpot. Right after God of War was revealed at E3 2016, a God of War article about the game referred to Atreus as Charlie. For 
some reason. Look, E3 is pretty hectic, all right? Why a young kid in a God of War game would be named Charlie is beyond us, but it certainly would have made for an interesting choice for the character. In fact, the creators of God of War found it so funny that they actually named Freya's giant tortoise Shirley after our mistake. So in the end, we got to name a giant tortoise, and I think that makes it all worth it in the end. Is he friendly? Boy. Speaking of God of War 2018, one of the other biggest changes it made was to the actor playing Kratos. Get in the boat, boy. For most of the other mainline games, actor TC Carson had voiced Kratos. However, in an interview with YouTube channel DJV Lad, Carson revealed that until 2018, he had only provided the voiceover for the character, with another actor doing the mocap work. My vengeance ends now. For the reboot, Sony wanted an actor who could do both at the same time, and so actor Christopher Judge, best known for his work as Teal'c on Stargate SG-1, was cast. Indeed. While Carson holds no ill will to Sony or the developers, he did state that he felt a bit disrespected for never getting a call telling him that he no longer had the job. Speaking of actors though, God of War's sequel Ragnarok was originally set to come out in 2021, but was delayed until 2022. While most people assumed this was due to problems caused by the ongoing global pandemic, Christopher Judge in September 2021 came out to say that the other reason was due to an injury he sustained in 2019. I need to be forthcoming. This has been approved by no one. To the beloved fandom, Ragnarok was delayed because of me. Had to have back surgery, both hips replaced, and knee surgery. They waited for me to rehab. In the end, we're all just glad that Judge is doing well, and that he got to continue playing the character, and that the developers have even more time to sharpen their game to perfection. This next piece of info comes from our own interview with God of War's director, Corey Barlog, for our series, Audio Logs. In the discussion, it was revealed that during the scene where Kratos floats down the river to retrieve his Blades of Chaos, Corey initially wanted there to be Hellwalkers all around the ridge around Kratos battling each other, showing Chaos all around the demigod as he had his moment of silence in his boat. However, due to budget constraints, all that had to be cut, leaving the scene to be a bit more empty, which Corey actually thinks was for the best because it allowed you to better feel Kratos' isolation. For our final tidbit, like Kratos, let's dive into one of the darkest pits of humanity, Twitter. On the first day of 2020, Corey Barlog tweeted, first tweet of the new decade, Eric Williams, remember that name, heart emoji. The enigmatic tweet sent many into a huge amount of speculation. Was Eric Williams some strangely named new enemy in God of War? Was the Prime Minister of Trinidad, named Eric Williams, somehow involved with the game? Or how about one of the most notorious Texas killers, also named Eric Williams? Okay, turns out none of those were true, but instead, Eric Williams turned out to be the name of the man who would become God of War Ragnarok's game director. Well, not as immediately exciting as his political or notorious namesakes, we're sure Eric Williams will be a fine leader for the upcoming end of the Norse world, while Corey oversees as creative director at Sony Santa Monica Studio. And that's our list for 13 cool things you may not have known about God of War. We hope that it brought you some wisdom as you jump back into the series on either PC or are waiting patiently with us for Ragnarok to finally fall later this year. And if you want more interesting info right from the man who helped craft the game, check out our aforementioned audio log with Corey Barlog. Until then, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you all in Midgard.